Myra is one of the best studied stars in the sky, yet it's kept a stunning secret that scientists have only just discovered in the glow of ultraviolet light. Today, the Hidden Universe is taking a break from our usual Spitzer Space Telescope discoveries in the infrared part of the spectrum. Instead, we're moving to the other side of visible light. NASA's Galaxy Evolution Explorer is an Earth-orbiting telescope with an ultraviolet eye to the universe. The ozone layer in our atmosphere screens out most of the incoming ultraviolet light. That's great for cutting down on sunburns, but it means astronomers need space-based telescopes, like Galax, if they want to see what's going on out there. And what's going on turned out to be quite a surprise when a team led by Dr. Chris Martin of Caltech stumbled across this ultraviolet marvel. Do you think it's a comet? At first glance, so do a lot of astronomers, but it's nothing so ordinary. Comets which travel within our solar system are seldom longer than the distance between the Earth and Sun. This spectacular discovery surrounds the star Myra and spans 13 light years. That's three times further than from us to the next star. What's pretty cool about this result is not only was it unexpected, it was kind of an accident. Dr. Mart Seibert, part of the research team, explains. Galax's primary mission is, is to map the entire sky in the ultraviolet. When this discovery for Myra was made, we weren't specifically targeting Myra. It just happened to be one of our fields of view. So when the images came down and we just happened to be going through them, we noticed this very bizarre nebulosity around it. It was quite a surprise because nobody expected to see anything in the ultraviolet around Myra, and nobody expected to see a tremendously long 13 light year tail behind Myra either. So what do we know about Myra, and why would it have such a unique tail? It's a well-known variable star, which appears red to the naked eye when it's bright enough to see. Even though it's only 20% more massive than the Sun, Myra is so large that it would swallow even the orbit of Mars. Because of their size, red giants lose their gravitational grip on their outer layers, blowing material away in a kind of stellar wind. Over the course of tens of thousands of years, this material forms a trailing tail. We see this tail because Myra is moving unusually fast relative to its neighboring stars. Where its wind slams into the local interstellar medium, a leading shock wave, or bow shock, forms. The researchers theorize that hot electrons from the shock mix with the wind and stream around and behind, forming the tail. Excited hydrogen molecules begin to glow. Hydrogen naturally emits in the ultraviolet, and so is just waiting to be discovered by Galax. In fact, I'd like to think of Myra as a true shooting star. Most people, when you say shooting star, think of meteoroids burning up through the atmosphere with a very brief flash of light. But this is a true shooting star, a star traveling supersonically, creating a bow shock, and leaving a luminous tail behind it, uh, also a turbulent wave. Since our own sun will become a red giant in several billion years, Myra gives us a chance to look into our own system's future. By looking back along Myra's tail, we see progressively older material tracing its outflow history back as much as 30,000 years. It's a kind of fossil record of the final breaths from a dying star. So what we see with Myra is a dramatic example of the recycling of stellar materials. Uh, the tail is leaving the seeds for new planets and new stars, uh, the elements of carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, hydrogen, all laid out for us almost like a ticker tape that we hope to be able to study in a way that we've never really been able to study this process before. It's remarkable that even after 400 years of scientific scrutiny, Myra still harbors astounding secrets. Missions like the Galaxy Evolution Explorer open our eyes to a whole new way of seeing what's all around us, and sometimes let us catch a shooting star. For the Spitzer Science Center, I'm Dr. Robert Hur, reminding you there's a hidden universe just waiting to be discovered. Our universe is a place of boundless night. It's filled with mysterious things that take cover in the unending darkness. If you watch carefully, you may see they even have a story to tell. Halloween is a time of ghosts and goblins. We all see them sometimes, even astronomers. 
NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope is capable of peering into the infrared recesses of the universe, revealing dark things unseen in visible light. Tonight, we present Spitzer's Trilogy of Terror, a night gallery of haunting images that tell a tale of the lives and deaths of stars. Our first exhibit takes us deep within the star fields of the constellation Sagittarius. The serpentine dust filament is about 11,000 light years away and harbors quite a meal deep within its belly. Dr. Sean Carey first spotted this cosmic snake and tells us about it and its impending case of indigestion. It's a very large object which is going to form some of the most massive stars. It's about uh, the size of a few solar systems in width and then its narrowest diameter. The snake's about 30 light years long. In the snake's belly currently now is forming a very massive star. It's going to be about 30 times the mass of our sun and about 100,000 times as bright as our sun. And once it fully forms, the radiation and winds from the star will blow the snake apart, will destroy its belly, and will leave a huge cavity behind. We think of space as a total vacuum, but that's not entirely correct. The atoms and molecules are few and far between, but summed over dozens of light years, they add up to a ghostly glow that Spitzer can see. This ghoulish specter is a bit closer to home, just under 4,000 light years away in the constellation Cygnus. It harbors a cluster of about 10 massive newborn stars and gives us a hint about our galactic snake's fate. Okay, so the galactic ghoul is what, it, what that snake is going to look like in a few million years. What's happening here is that the massive stars, like the one that's forming in the belly of the snake, have started to carve out the material that they formed out of and they're blowing a huge cavity, and you can kind of see the rim of the cavity in the, in the reddish kind of color in the circle region that, that outlines the face of the ghoul, and inside is that kind of greenish image, uh, gas which is uh, ionized by the hot young stars. Sometimes our eyes, limited to the realm of the visible, aren't enough to see what's hiding in the shadows. Consider this region, which, at a casual glance, shows little but stars and an hourglass-shaped smudge. Spitzer's dust-piercing view lays bare what's lurking underneath. Dubbed the Black Widow Nebula, this beast may show us a connection between spiders and snakes. The spider image we're looking at now is about the same distance and same size, actually, as the snake image that we looked at previously. And what's happening here is that there's winds and shocks from two massive stars forming that are colliding together like snow plows that are ramming head on and of course they push everything in between them together and when they push the stuff together it becomes very dense and opaque so it's quite likely that in a few million years the spider shape will cool off and leave a snake behind. The snake, ghost, and spider have shown us different stages in the birth of stars but coming full circle let's consider a star's demise. Floating below the snake, we see a red orb that's pretty much the ghost of a long-dead star. At the end of its life, it detonated in a violent supernova explosion. This blast wave marks its passing as a kind of cosmic trick-or-treat. The nasty trick was the explosion that wiped out the star and its solar system. But the process also spreads heavy elements back into the galaxy. This treat helps form the next generation of stars and planets. Looking for creepy creatures in the infrared sky is kind of like an astronomer's way of telling ghost stories around a campfire. In facing these fears, we can learn a little bit about the universe too. For the Spitzer Science Center, I'm Dr. Robert Hurt, reminding you there's a hidden and sometimes haunted universe just waiting to be discovered. Our classic vision of spiral arms and galaxies gives way to a spectacular infrared view of the dust within, courtesy of NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope. Spitzer's infrared view is almost like an x-ray of the dusty bones within the arms and disks of galaxies. Infrared light reveals the amazing contrasts between the two interacting galaxies known as the Whirlpool.
the galaxies in our local neighborhood have a wide variety of shapes and structures that Spitzer's unique view helps us see more clearly. The dusty ring encircling the Sombrero Galaxy stands out vividly in infrared light. Combining the visible Hubble and infrared Spitzer views gives us an amazing composite, expanding our own vision of this galaxy.